Hello, my name is Mike Johnson and I'm taking you on an inside and outside video tour of this 2016 Forest River Georgetown. This is a top of the line Georgetown and the model, I'm going to show you the floor plan here. They're, they got, they kind of changed the model number on different years. So this is a 364 TS and here is a floor plan diagram of it but and the specifications but on some years they call it the 36 b5 so if you're looking for a 36 b5 or a 364 ts it's basically the same floor plan really the only difference is the rear bathroom is reverse on one of them so on the 36B5, the washer and dryer is on the passenger side and the shower is on the driver's side. On the 364TS, which is this, the shower is on the passenger side and the washer and dryer is on the driver's side in the rear bathroom. Everything else is pretty much the same overall. Now this one is very, very upgraded. and I'm gonna to talk to you about it in this video. I'm gonna take my time, so if you need to, rush through it you can fast forward so once again here are the specifications sheet that shows the water capacities and stuff like that everybody wants to know those questions you can always adjust it it is on the 22,000 pound gross vehicle weight rating chassis so you only need a car driver's license to operate this just like a passenger car you don't need a bus license you don't need a truck driver's license just a car driver's license, the same as you would to drive a Honda Civic. And it's not that much more complicated than driving a Honda Civic. Just longer and taller. Now this one has the big 22.5 inch aluminum alloy rims, which are a larger diameter. It's about a 37 inch rolling diameter. So it's a little bit smoother riding. You have more rubber between you and the road. It's on Michelin tires. Tire tread is very good. We're going to show underneath in a little bit. We're going to take and take a peek on the roof. Speaking of the roof, this one has one of the upgrades. The owner spent tens of thousands of dollars upgrading this, starting from when they built it at the factory. This has the full body paint job. Now they say it takes 14 weeks to paint one of these with a full body painted graphics and it's not cheap. It adds like $15,000 to the price tag when you buy one over the base model. And here is a little picture of what the base model looks like. They have the same floor plan available in the base model, but a lot of times just to save time and offer a lower price, they'll, they won't paint them but boy, it looks really impressive. You have curb appeal is what they call it when you roll up in this one. Everybody thinks you're a multimillionaire when you pull up looking like this. And the paint protects it a lot further. So talking about the upgrades, the full body paint, major upgrade. And it looks like it's in perfect condition. It has a additional solar system on the roof so this thing here these are your solar power cables routed up onto the roof where you have four big solar panels and here's a picture of the solar panels that's a high performance solar battery charger now some people like to camp at campgrounds with full hookups where you have water sewer and electrical right there on a concrete pad surrounded by lots of other rvs now for that type of camping you don't need the solar but other people like to go out into the middle of nowhere in the desert, tow their ATVs into the mountains or the desert or some by some lake where there's what they call it primitive camp camping or boondock camping, camping where you have no hookups whatsoever. Those solar panels are ideal for the boondock camping because they're constantly providing power to charge the batteries without you needing to run the generator or the engine or anything like that and uh i've never had one with four panels on it that's a pretty extensive array they're not cheap to put the solar system on there 
pretty expensive this one has side view cameras so there's little things here on the side these are side view cameras so when you activate the turn signals left or right it triggers the left or right turn signal cameras to activate and of course it has a backup camera on the rear making it easy to back it up into a tight parking space like this one without running over a tree or something like that on the rear bumper you have a v5 towing package with a seven pin connector and like i said looks like brand new this motorhome does it's very clean the previous license plates that were on this were idaho license plates they used it they didn't use it very aggressively they took really good care of it they spent a lot of money on it after they bought it now I'm gonna peek in one of these compartments here we're still talking about upgrades now this has a DC battery power to AC 110 volt outlet inverter and they normally the 364 TS comes with a 2000 watt or a 1000 watt inverter the base comes with a like a 1000 watt to run the refrigerator but this consumer who owned this they upgraded it to a 5000 watt pure sign inverter that's a giant inverter so you can run realistically inverters is to explain it if you have a 5000 watt inverter you can use up to about 2500 watts in bursts from your battery power to run appliances tvs all that stuff so whatever the inverters are rated that's a surge rating but the continuous rating you want to keep it closer to half that but uh you need those solar panels up there to maintain your battery power you have them it's got a weatherproof power awning so we can go inside the entry door here Oh, outside television, outside stereo speakers, right here. We can extend the power awning at a press of a button. The awning fabric is looks like brand new. We actually had to change one of the shade awnings. It had a little loose end wasn't actually torn but we changed it anyways so this is excellent condition and the awning over the awning has a metal shroud to protect it when it's rolled up some awnings they don't have these metal shrouds most of the cheaper rvs don't have that metal shroud so if you park it in the sun for long periods of time that material will dry out and it could crack or even break off over time but the metal reinforces it so when it's wound up this fabric might last 10 to 20 years if you're taking care of your RV and at the press of a button we can wind it back up make sure the door is clear I'm just pressing the little button here and I'm winding up the awning now they normally don't have wind sensors on the power awnings when they first came out way back like in 2004 2006 around that they tried putting wind sensors on them but they didn't work out so well so most of them don't have wind sensors you have to roll it up if you're expecting to be in a hurricane or something like that there is a um, LED light strip up over here I'll put a little picture of it with the LED light strip on it's very nice on the front is what they call diamond shield it's a clear film over the paint on the front to protect it from rock chips so there's a full diamond shield a big one-piece windshield without the center bar to obstruct your view they even add the little uh, deer deer devices so the deer wouldn't run in front of them or home and make some kind of noise that deers are supposed to be chased away by there are three slide outs on this motorhome this one has the master bedroom king bed slide out it has bayview windows and the windows on this coach are frameless 
dual pane windows. So these are actually insulated windows. That's another upgrade. The dual pane insulated windows, they insulate you against sound or thermal loss. If it's really cold outside, you're not gonna get this waterfall of cold air coming from the window because of the dual pane windows cut that down. And in the summertime, you're not gonna get as much heat radiating into the RV in the summer. So dual pane insulated windows. It's very, very nice. We're going through. Let's go inside and inspect the inside of the Georgetown. Three slide bunkhouse, dual, two full pepper motorhome. As we come inside, we're gonna notice there's a lot of space inside. There's various lighting fixtures LED lighting, these are reading lights. You just push the button and they come on. It's got roller, day and night shades. These are the newer, more resistant to holding odors. There are no odors in this coach. It smells like brand new. And we're talking about upgrades. We, I believe this uh, seats have been reupholstered with a higher quality material than they originally came from, came with, because the seats look like brand new, like they've never been sat on, but they look factory. This is a tough marine grade vinyl. Looks like the owner probably spent ten thousand dollars upgrading the upholstery material, which means if you buy one that's and here's what happens if you buy a real nice motorhome some of the ultra leather that they use if you let it get exposed to the sun it starts to dry out and flake and so if you sit in the flaky motorhome then your back will all be covered with a material so you'll have to get a reupholstered so you don't want to reupholster a motorhome it's a lot of work and as a consumer, you would probably have to spend about $10,000 to redo the whole thing. Those are the leg rests. This is a jackknife sofa, so it turns into a bed. I'm going to show a picture here of it as a bed. And then you have the Dream Dinette. I really like the Dream Dinette. It has a little lever under the table. Now there's other videos of Georgetown Mother Sellers you the show more features than what I'm showing you it goes down like an elevator or it goes up you flip the lever and it locks actually it goes in a little bit deeper locks in position and these are hinged for storage underneath some most RVs have a piece of plywood that you have gonna give you splinters not the Georgetown. These are hinged, well designed, with storage under the dinette. It turns into a bed, of course. We'll show you a picture of it as a bed. But um, here you go. But it, you can also store your beer, bottled water, or extra linens under the dinette, and it's easy access. Up in the front, you have a drop down bunk bed and you have dedicated bunk beds the previous owner may have a small kid so they had this safety shield we'll leave it in there but you don't really need this it has a safety shield for the bunk beds each bunk has its own television nice 22 inch or thereabouts tv maybe it's a 24 inch actually in each bunk, there's a little light. LED lights. The big deal about LED lights, if you're dry camping in a primitive campground and you're using battery power, these LED lights last forever and ever. Full-size re residential refrigerator. King-size bed. This is not the normal standard queen size this is an extra wide king size bed hypothetically you could sleep two adults and a little one in the bed so you could potentially sleep three people in the king size bed some 
parents with the little ones like to keep them in the bed with them. So, rear bathroom. Now here's the difference between a Georgetown 364 or a 36 B5 floor plan configuration. This is the 364. So you have the shower to your left as you walk into the bathroom. That's a passenger side. And you have a washer and dryer compartment on the driver's side. Now, here's another upgrade. This is a washer dryer unit. It's a very nice unit. It, you can do your laundry. Well, while we're on the subject, let's cover it. You throw your clothes in here. You dial in the setting. You turn it on. First it washes the clothes. Then it dries the clothes. Then when it's done, you take it out dry. It does both in one unit. You don't have to hang your clothes up and dry it out. It's a and these washing machines by themselves are a thousand fifteen hundred dollars. That's like I said, thousands in upgrades. You know, you go buy a motorhome and you say, Oh, it can take a washer and dryer, but this one has a washer and dryer. It's actually pretty rare to find them with a washer and dryer. Porcelain toilet, a nice spacious shower here with little racks to put your soap dishes still got the label on it like if it was never even used but this is a two full bathroom rv so in the mid bathroom you have another toilet toilet number two and shower number two there's actually a third shower the outside shower so you could say it has three showers if you count the outside shower and two toilets led lighting weatherproof vent covers over the vents you can actually leave these vents open so when you're camping even if it's raining outside you can leave the vent open on this coach because when i show you the picture of the roof it has these weatherproof vent covers over the top the glass shower enclosures these are not the little plastic or cheap curtains these are the glass shower enclosure and this one has a seat in it where you can sit down now the rear bathroom if the king size bed slide is in you cannot access it but the front bathroom you can fully access it whether the the bed slide is open or not 32 inch tv in the bedroom 32 inch TV over the kitchen area so the TV in the front faces the sofa so if you've got little ones traveling with you they can sit here and enjoy the TV playing movies or video games and then when you say hey kids look it's a deer or a coyote or a bear or a tiger you know if you're driving through Houston you might see a tiger so they can look and say oh yeah cool dad wow mom and then they go back to playing their video games but hey you're getting them outside right so while we're talking about the inside let's focus on the kitchen now this has a full residential three thousand dollars style refrigerator freezer unit double door with ice maker it's got a full propane gas fired oven the oven is a big deal if you dry camp because a lot of times when you go to a primitive campground there's people in sleeping in tents nearby like in national parks and state parks for example they'll tell you you cannot use the generator after 10 p.m. so that means no microwaves in a primitive campground after or after 8 p.m. actually so having the uh, big inverter on there and stuff like that you have additional capacity to do some of these things there is storage behind the TV the refrigerator is clean it barely looks used it's still got some of the original blue plastic in there it's got brand new water filters that can be installed if you wanted to use the ice maker it doesn't look like they used it that much 
there are some miles on this RV, but it does not look used. Some RVs, some RVs are lived in. You go see them, they have 4,000 miles on them, but the person has been living in them for four, five, six years. Not this one. This one looks barely used. So when you go dry camping or primitive camping, if you have a gas oven, it's really important. Because if you show up at 8.15 at night to your primitive campground and there's people in tents going to bed, next to you they don't want you running your generator this now keep in mind it doesn't matter at a full hookup campground with power sewer and electrical connections because you don't need to run a generator anyways if you're a full hookup because you just plug in the rv and you have power but in a primitive campground which is is fully capable of doing then you're good to go they even put supplemental heating ducts underneath insulation this thing is ready for cold weather upgraded for cold weather they did so much weatherproof vent covers now the microwave is a convection microwave which means that a will cook like a microwave or with these metal racks in there you can cook it like a baking oven so you can bake in this oven or you can bake in that oven or you can bake in both ovens you can do it either way over here you have storage you have storage under the pantry over the front you have storage and you have that bed so i'm gonna pull this bed down let me put my camera in a stable position on the georgetown on this here there's no power electric motors to fail on you. You just lift up, slide this out of the way, and then it turns into a Murphy bed. Twin size, and long actually. I'm just gently pulling it down, and then swing it down like so. And now you have a twin bed over the front seats. It says do not exceed 200 pounds. Some of the salesmen say you could go up to 300 pounds. But you got extra kids or teenagers, so you can put them up there. They can be all by themselves up there. It's very easy to put it away. Counterweighted, so it goes up like so. You have additional storage in the front up here. Genuine Corian countertops, nice faucet fixture, stainless steel sink. All the sinks are stainless steel. Corian sink covers. Your cooktop has covers and these covers have a storage place behind here you have a real glass tile backsplash when you cook some motorhomes only give you wallpaper behind so if you splatter grease all over it eventually you'll destroy the wallpaper nice easy to clean backsplash save you a lot of time and energy taking care of it Now we're on generator power right now. There's storage under the bottom bunk. There's a massive wardrobe. Lots of storage in the bedroom here. Deep drawers that pull out. And some people, I was talking earlier, or starting to talk when I got a phone call. Some people when they buy a motorhome you'll see a used motorhome maybe only has 4,000 miles on it but then you'll start opening the cabinets and they're all banged up because they were living in it other motorhomes they might be a 2020 and they have 20,000 miles on them in just one year that may be because they were rented or rented uh, did owner self-operated rentals 
those are beat to death so you don't want to buy something like that this one shows pride of ownership and it shows the owner put a lot of money they had money to put into it and energy and they took good care of it so pride of ownership I'm trying to keep my video from getting too long over here is your level control center you have your water heater remember there's two water heaters so this turns on the propane water heaters and there's electric switches on each water heater so you can have electric water heat as well there's dual air conditioning units the AC controls are right here for the front and there for the rear two big powerful rooftop air conditioners a fantastic super quiet ventilation fan now all these vents have weatherproof vent covers now up in the driver's seat area the material looks like brand new because i think these were reupholstered with brand new material let's go ahead and put the slides closed so you can see how much room there is first when I'm going to show you how to do it as if you're the owner you want to remember how to do it correctly so you don't mess anything up go to the rear bathroom make sure the shower door is secured with this lever here turn off the lights this is the rear water heater controls right here the other one is the front controls make sure this door is closed and secured you don't want to hurt, hurt the door with the slide out so make sure that's closed then bed slide in and you got a nice mattress they may have put a brand new mattress protector over this uh, bed because it looked like nobody's ever slept on it bed slide in then the bunk slide comes in of course if you want you can turn the lights off in the bedroom but I'm filming so I want the lights on so you can see what I'm looking at. The Georgetown has a nice cable drive system which keeps the slides squared and tight in the RV. And then the front slide, you wanna watch them when they come in. Make sure you don't hit the front seat or something if it was reclined back. That's a common mistake that people make is they hit the driver's seat with a slide out you don't want to do that doesn't look like it's happened to this one though it looks like brand new everything it's not brand new but it looks brand new you bring this home your neighbors are going to think you just spent out two hundred and fifty thousand dollars that's how good it looks. looks brand new so we can walk to the restroom with the slides closed everybody always says can i see that but the trick is, oh, also want to secure your doors with these positive locking pins. I'm trying to hold the camera and do it at the same time, so forgive me. But I can still get in the restroom. You want to secure the glass doors. I'm filming. Make sure the glass doors aren't going to move around when you're driving and the sliding doors aren't going to move around when you're driving. Walk around the outside, make sure your awning is in. It is an electric awning. Start the engine. And then you can retract your leveling jacks. The jacks are down right now. Sun is coming in the front so I'm gonna lower my window shade just for my personal comfort there's two ways to lower the leveling jacks I mean raise the leveling jacks one you can push the power on and retract all jacks or you can release the parking brake if you're in a real hurry but if you release the parking brake it's gonna start beeping at you because you don't want to drive away with the jacks partially lowered because you could cause some damage to the RV. If I put it into reverse, I have my backup camera there. There's a vehicle parked behind me, so I don't want to back up. I want to go 
go forward. Put on my turn signal, and now I have my right turn signal camera. Now on the RV right now, we haven't had a chance to check it out, but when I do put on my left turn signal, I'm not getting the picture from the left camera for some reason. Not sure. The right camera, yes. The left one, no, for some reason. So as I move the RV around, I'm going to point it so the sun is behind me. I'm using my backup camera and my wide towing mirrors. It's actually really easy to drive a motorhome this size. Just think big. I like to say you've never driven a vehicle this big until you have. If you're really nervous about it, if you'd be able to do it or not, you can go sign up for a big rig truck driver school there used to be one called truck masters but it doesn't have to be that usually they'll take you out for a 30 minute demo drive in one of these 18 wheeler semis with a professional driver you can drive around the block a few times in a big 16 speed 18 wheeler once you've done that driving something like this is a piece of cake you know this is not that big it looks big compared to a, a little Honda Civic, but it's nowhere near as big as these big semi trucks. Up on the dash here, we've got dash fans, radio enable or disable, USB ports to plug things into, a map light, these overhead light. The generator is running and it tells me that it has 820 hours on the generator at this time this does have power mirrors beware that some motorhomes do not have power mirrors but this one does and it has heated mirrors so you can keep the mirrors warm so they won't freeze up in the winter time over the driver's seat I have a power shade this shade button I can actually when I'm going to sleep at night I can lower this shade all the way down And then these roller shades. This is much nicer and easier to use than the curtains. You know, the wraparound curtains. Some RVs have curtains. They look nice and everything with the wraparound curtains. But here's what I like. When I'm driving a Class A motorhome, which I prefer over the little C-Class. You know what a C-Class is, right? Here's a picture of a C-Class. It looks like a van in the front. This big motorhome can turn much sharper than a c-class motorhome because you've got those big 22.5 inch tires what they call the wheel cut when you turn the wheel the wheel cut angle can go much shorter sharper because of the big rim diameter so it can make a u-turn in a smaller space with this big long motorhome than the c-class motorhome can which seems counterintuitive because a c-class looks like a car right when you're sitting in the driver's seat but this is easier to drive than a C-Class. I definitely prefer A-Class over C-Class. Yet, they outsell these A-Class two to one. Maybe because they're cheaper. Don't go cheap, go top of the line. If you're gonna spend a lot of money, you might as well go for it and get something you're gonna enjoy, like this. Wouldn't it be nice to have two bathrooms when you're out camping? Somebody can be taking a shower. You can literally have two people using the restroom and two people taking a shower, three people taking a shower at the same time because you have the outside shower. So you can handle extra people. Look at my uh, window shade is down. So if I'm driving and the sun is shining in, I'm not getting as much sun. My wife really likes this feature because she doesn't like to get too much sun. That's what she tells me all the time. So let's look at the odometer reading. The odometer is saying 29,642 miles. And by the looks of it, they loved every minute of it. There we go. You can manually select which camera you're gonna watch. 
So I, ma I manually selected the rear view. So you, you know, if you're towing a car or a boat or something behind, you can keep your eye on your trailer when you're driving, which is nice. So I'm stopping in this shady spot here. I'm gonna show you how to use the leveling jacks real quick. Leveling jacks, this is how you do it. Set the parking brake. Now, this is not too unlevel, but I prefer to manually level. This is super easy. First, you could just hit auto and the RV will automatically level itself. There's a calibration zero point, which it will level itself to. And if you don't like the way it is, you can tweak it. But I prefer to manually level. So instead of doing auto, I will lower the left side, which I think is the high ground. And then I'm gonna lower the right side. Pressing it firmly. And it's gonna raise. And it stopped all by itself. I just was holding the button down and it's semi-auto leveled. So first, I was leaning. So see what I was doing? I was leaning like this. So I raised the jacks and then I raised the jacks on the other side and it stopped at level automatically. So manual is actual, actually semi-auto. So we're level and I'm gonna release the parking brakes and the jacks are going up now. One of the reasons why I don't like auto leveling is it tends to raise the RV a little bit higher to find the zero point. And so when you release the leveling jacks, if you're higher, it drops more. And it's a little unsettling for some people. Ice cold air conditioner. There are three air conditioning, the dash air and the rear air. It's a really nice motorhome. We have a big stereo up there with a CD player. We have a nice stereo down here with a CD player. Ice cold air conditioning. This RV passed the small check. Remote control for the CD player. A center table. This table comes out. Cup holders. See, I'm maneuvering around this building. These motorhomes are easy to drive. I can even pull it right into this building here. Excellent maneuverability. That's our service department on the right. See the mirrors, you watch the mirrors, are they close? Is the mirror close? And you can pull it right inside. Just go slow. Don't drive like your Mario Andretti at the racetrack. I'm pulling it into a building. See how easy it is to drive? I'm watching my mirror clearance to the side. I'm watching when I'm inside the building here. And I'm cutting it so that I can open the slides out so it'll be here indoors in my air-conditioned space so you can come take a look at it indoors so we're coming down underneath to take a look underneath the chassis visual inspection of the underpinnings now here's another upgrade as we go underneath it's got a super heavy-duty anti-roll bar that I'm going to show you underneath they had the factory one but they added a second one. So as we look underneath, there's an 80 gallon fuel tank under here. It's nice and clean underneath. That's the 80 gallon fuel tank. So you have a lot of fuel, your hydraulic leveling jacks. Notice this anti-sway bar. Take a look, it's got the urethane blue and yellow bushings. You got your Michelin tires. All six tires have nice thick tread. That's your parking brake mounted on the differential. The newer chassis have the 
differential mounted parking brake. Triple power step, and this step is reinforced to support extra weight over the stock configuration. That was another upgrade. Your aluminum alloy rims. Your underneath the engine is nice, clean. Look, see there's another sway bar on the front, that extra sway bar. And did you notice there's a steering stabilizer, that big orange thing under there, that's a steering stabilizer. And custom built-in shocks. They spent a lot of money upgrading this RV. That's your drive shaft, of course, and your exhaust pipe, the generator's exhaust. Look right here, you have a, a drain point for your black and gray tanks. It makes it easy to dump the waste tanks. There's another look, that's the stock empty sway bar. Another view of the tires on the other side. And see, there's another anti-sway bar on the back of the axle here with the yellow and blue urethane bushings. I tried to get it on the angle of the camera, but um, these are thousands in upgrades. Taking a look underneath. This is the solar charge controller primary unit. The other part is inside. And then this is full pass-through storage. Storage passes through all the way to the other side. Slam latches, they slam closed. This model has two water heaters, six gallon water heaters. Each one is six gallons and there's two of them. You only need one, but you can run two. So with the dual bathrooms, you can take two people take hot showers at the same time for real world camping. This is the second water heater back here. Now, to see if this RV is still available, go to my website. The website is mybestcar.com. And if you're gonna buy one of my motorhomes, you're gonna pay your check to the order of the company name is a buyer's choice. A buyer's choice and mybestcar.com is the website. Now I thank you for watching my video. If you have questions about one of the RVs I have available, give me a call. 951-681-2101. My name is Mike Johnson. Thank you for watching.